You know, I messed up. It all happened about five years ago in a conference room right up there. I lost my temper in a deal negotiation. My client's emotions spiraled out of control and the real estate deal negotiation failed and I really damaged the relationship with my client. I promised myself that this would never happen again and since I developed the five steps to a successful deal negotiation, it hasn't. I wanna take you through the steps. Let's hit this. Hello, my friend, I'm Ian Korzine, your YouTube lawyer. Today we're talking about deal negotiation, how to be a successful negotiator. Every day, YouTubers like you negotiate equipment purchases and collabs and brand deals. A core competency for being a YouTuber should be understanding how to successfully negotiate deals, yet no one teaches it. I will, I will. Reminds me of what I was like in fifth grade. Before we get to the steps for a successful deal negotiation, we have to understand our end goal. What is that? Well, it's simple. A successful deal negotiation is when the two people to the negotiation end up having both of their demands met. So for example, if you see that camera that you want on eBay for 500 bucks, you put in an offer for 250, you end up getting the camera for 350, that is a successful deal negotiation. You got the camera at a discount and the person who didn't need the camera anymore also got some good cash for it. Ideally, as a successful YouTuber, every single deal you enter into should be a successful deal negotiation. All right, that's enough, let's get to the steps. Step number one, deal preparation. Let's say you've been offered a brand deal from Squarespace like every other YouTuber. You want to prepare for that negotiation. What do you do? Call other YouTubers and ask about their negotiations with Squarespace. Are they willing to negotiate at all? What are the typical terms of a deal? How are you paid? You might even kind of talk to them and say, listen, how much are you being paid so that you are adequately prepared when you go into the bargaining room and try to make a deal with Squarespace? Once you get this information, then you need to do more preparation. What do you want to get out of a deal with Squarespace? Write that down. Also think about why is Squarespace interested in you? What are their interests in the deal? Then think about creative ways to structure a deal so that you can lock it down with Squarespace. So for example, instead of cash, you might ask for free websites. You may ask for commission as opposed to a flat fee. Come up with different variables for your deal with Squarespace. That way you're adequately prepared when you're at the bargaining table to be able to give Squarespace what they want and at the same time get what you want. And it's really important as a successful YouTuber, you need to be prepared for the deal no matter how big or how small. Step number two, emotional preparation. I can't overemphasize this enough. Any deal that you as a YouTuber are gonna do is gonna fail if you show anxiety, fear, or anger. Either your opponent is gonna walk away from the bargaining table or he's gonna get the best of you. The only way to get a deal done is with a calm demeanor. How do you do that? You actually practice being calm. So you prepare yourself in advance of the negotiation. What are you gonna do if you get angry? I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna walk away from the bargaining table, take five minutes, take some deep breaths, and get yourself centered, get yourself calm. That's the only way that you're gonna be able to cement a quality deal as a successful YouTuber. Step number three, disarm your negotiating partner. Let's say you wanna rent a space for one of your YouTube video shoots. Well, oftentimes the owner of the space is gonna get his dukes up. He's gonna be ready for you to lowball him and try to get the best deal you can for that space. And he's not gonna let that happen. So he has his resistance up waiting for you to make that offer. So what is the solution? Disarm him. Be exactly the opposite of what you think he expects. He thinks you're gonna be aggressive? Well, then you be complimentary. You listen to him. You mirror back his statements to him. You make sure that he understands that you understand his position. So if he says, this is a highly sought after location for YouTubers, then you mirror back. You say, I understand. This is a highly sought after location for YouTubers and I wanna make you this deal so that I can make the best video and represent your property the best way possible. You always have to protect your interest in the negotiation, but break the resistance on the other side by listening, by hearing the other person. Blow him or her away with your reasonable deal negotiation. Step number four, real-time research. I love this step, this is my favorite one. So you're in the negotiation and you're trying to figure out what the other side's interests are in this negotiation. Well, you can get some real-time research done by using a particular phrase that I love. So what you do is you say, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're interested in, and then label what you think the other side is interested in in getting out of this deal. 
What's so wonderful about this technique is you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, people have this irresistible need, regardless of how they're thinking about the negotiation, to correct other people. So they're gonna be willing to correct you, you're actually inviting them to correct you, and then they're volunteering their interest in the negotiation to you, which you can use to give them and get what you want in that negotiation. If you're still not sure what your negotiation partner's interests are, you can use the phrase, what if we did this, and then explain your plan for the negotiation. Oftentimes your negotiation partner says that that stinks, that's not gonna fly, but in the process, he or she is disclosing what he wants out of the deal. So to win this deal, all you do is take that interest that you learned from these statements and then insert it in your negotiation plan so that they get what they want out of the deal and you get what you want out of the deal. I swear, it's like magic. Step number five, Ian's negotiation techniques. I feel a little guilty. I've come up with about 25 different techniques for successful deal negotiations, but we only have time today for three. So I'm gonna take you through the most important three successful deal negotiation strategies for YouTubers. Check with the boss. The first one we're gonna talk about is check with the boss. I like this technique a lot. It usually is used at the end of the negotiation when all the main terms of the deal have been decided. You've even indicated some kind of tentative consent to these terms. And then the deal is put on the table and you say, you know, everything looks pretty good, but I still have to check with the boss. All right, the boss could be like your business partner or your superior or your wife, whatever it is, if the other side flinches when you say this, then you know you've got them. They didn't do enough homework, didn't do enough deal preparation to know that you weren't the final say. And if that's the case, if they're still at the bargaining table, then what you could do is go back to your boss and talk about the deal. Most of the time, the boss will reject the deal, so to speak, and you'll come back with a counter offer with some minor terms that you're gonna try to insert the deal to make it sweeter to protect your interest. Freebies. The next one we're gonna talk about is freebies, and it's just like check with the boss. You use it at the end of the negotiation. The essential terms of the deal are already there, and you're looking at your negotiation partner, and you've built up trust with that person. And you look her right in the eyes and you say, this looks good, but I'm gonna need you to do more. At that stage, if the other side is really invested in you, then they're gonna look, look at you and say something like, okay, well, what more do you need? At that stage, you insert smaller terms into the deal to serve your interests that don't cost a lot to the other side. So you may ask for a little bit more money. You may ask for small things like event tickets or a little bit of product or free merchandise. These kind of things that'll sweeten the deal for you and get the deal done for you, but at the same time, not cost the other side, not make them walk away from the bargaining table. And the final of Ian's negotiation techniques is auction. This one is a great one, but you're gonna have to do a little bit of work before the negotiation starts. You're gonna have to get offers from other competitors of your negotiation partner so that you're prepared to walk into this one. What's so good about the auction though, is it gets your negotiation partner, if he's invested in you, to negotiate against himself. So he may present his demand, his first offer for the deal. And what you would do is respond, gosh, that sounds good. However, I'm considering working with a number of other brand partners. And that's the point when you know whether or not you've got them or not. Some negotiation partners will walk away from the bargaining table and others who are invested in you at that point basically wanna know what the other competitors have offered you so that they can offer to you and maybe even better the deal. The hardest part of the auction is you gotta have those competitor deals lined up before you walk into the negotiating room with your negotiating partner. If you don't have those deals lined up, then the other side's gonna see through you, you're gonna lose credibility and you're gonna lose the deal. Speaking of losing the deal, how do you even make money on YouTube in the first place? If you wanna learn about how to get sponsorships brand deals, and other pay deals as a YouTuber, watch this video right here. It will give you crucial information on how to make money as a YouTuber. If you're new to the channel, come join us. Hit the like button and consider subscribing. Also, you should join our Discord server. There's a link to the server below. I do live chats almost every day and provide you with free legal templates. All right, that's enough for today. We'll see you next time.